Good morning from the garden and welcome to today's video in which I want to talk about my gardening plans for this coming month. It's the 2nd of May and so far the spring has been extremely cold, probably the coldest I can remember in my almost 20 years of gardening in the Netherlands. Uh, and that's why I'm still wearing a woolen jumper and why most of the beds that where we have planted something are still covered with row covers. I want to start with a little personal side note. Um, if you're new here, my name is Vera Gröting. I am a permaculture gardener, gardening, garden designer, garden writer, photographer, videographer, um, teacher. And that means that I have been lucky enough to be able to turn my passion into my job. But this is sort of a mixed blessing because it means that something that started as a relaxing hobby has turned into a job. So it has had an, a big impact on the way I garden. I have to sort of constantly also be conscious of what needs to be photographed, what needs to be filmed. Um, and this month I decided I want to try to go back to sort of the relaxed way that I used to garden. And for that reason, I am not going to be sharing anything on any social media platform. So before I go on my little social media hiatus, I want to make a video about my plans for this month, which are many. And I'm also planning in June to film a video in which we can hopefully show you some progress we've made. Our quarter acre plot is designed according to permaculture principles. A small part of it is a kitchen garden consisting of raised beds, no dig beds. Uh, we have a greenhouse as well. And the rest of the plot is designed as a food forest. So let's start with my plans for the kitchen garden. I want to do a couple of trials this year. I like to do trials. <laughs> Um, in which I discover the best varieties for our climate, the most productive ones, the most disease resistant ones and so on. One of them is this year will be um, iceberg lettuce, um, a little iceberg lettuce trial, trial. I have already sown my five varieties, five or six. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I love to eat iceberg lettuce, but it's um, a variety of lettuce that I'm not very, that I have not had a lot of luck with growing so i want to check out how the different varieties perform in our climate in our garden and our soil and i also um, i have sown them a little later than i sow my first batch of lettuce because i want also want to see how they are affected by summer heat i will also be doing a trial of different varieties of kale i have quite many maybe close to 10 i'll be sowing those this year sorry this month uh, so i will not be planting them out in may yet um, then a third trial that will be taking place in the greenhouse so let's head over there yesterday there was sun and there was rain I'm trying two things currently in the greenhouse that I have not done before. One of them was planting a couple of, I think a dozen or so, um, strawberry plants in February. And hopefully you can see they're way ahead of the plants outside, which are not flowering yet. And these are already forming fruits. So I hope we'll be harvesting our first strawberries shortly. The second thing was sowing in January. I showed you this in my January video on what was happening in the greenhouse. I sowed some carrots, fennel, <laughs> beets and more carrots a month, about a month later. And those two are way ahead of anything outside and also the greenhouse should protect them for car from carrot fly. So um, I think the first carrots, first tiny, and the most delicious carrots should be ready in a couple of weeks. Um, so that's, um, that's also something to look forward to this month. Then the third trial I'll be doing in annual vegetables this year will be taking place here. We have just spread out a new layer of compost here yesterday. 
and this is where I'll be planting my tomatoes. A couple of years ago, I did a cherry tomato trial. I think it was two years ago, where we trialed, I think, seven varieties. And this year, I'll be pitting our favorites from back then, which were Sun Gold and Asterina, against six or seven completely new varieties, varieties that I have not even seen other people growing. So I'm very excited to find out um, how they perform. So that was um, a look at the greenhouse and there's a final fourth um, trial that I'll be doing uh, when it comes to annual vegetables and that will be outside. So I'm sitting in my field of cardboard. This is uh, where our hugel bed used to be and we, had, we filmed a video about dismantling it in, back in February. Uh, we spread out the, well, mostly composted, by now composted wooden materials out a bit and we covered this part of the garden with cardboard. We do this every year. Um, we cover a part of the food forest understory with cardboard to get rid of perennial weeds before we start planting it up with um, a very diverse herb layer. I have videos about that too. I can link one here. And of course it's not fun to be looking at a field of cardboard for a season and also it's kind of a wasted space for a year then. But what we do is plant uh, winter squash and sometimes also summer squash through small holes in the cardboard. So this is where our uh, pumpkin patch will be this year. And I talked about in my video when I received my seed orders about uh, wanting to do a little trial of uh, Hubbard winter squash varieties, which are also uh, one of my favorite next to butter nuts. Uh, one of my favorites to eat. But again, we don't have a lot, of, a lot of luck growing them or they're not very productive for us. So I'm trialing some new varieties this year. I've already sown them. They're growing beautifully on the windowsill and I'll be planting them out um, somewhere in the second half of May, depending on when the weather will finally get a little warmer. But um, like I said, this is our way to get rid of weeds before we start planting up the hair player and I want to show you part of the garden that had been covered last year. And now something in so this area under our one of our one of our nine apple trees uh, this one is called Ecolette and uh, our pair this one is Williams. Um, this is the part of the garden that was covered last with cardboard last year and this is where we grew winter squash then. Um, as you can hopefully see there are no weeds. Uh, we have a lot of couch grass so that's the main uh, concern here. Um, and in s about a month ago hmm, we covered the area with wood chip and I'm starting to plant up the hair player. Most of the plants that I have planted so far are from plants that I already had and divided and moved from other parts of the garden. So I'm spending very little money of, on the hair player. And that's also why we're one of the reasons why we're doing it uh, gradually over time. Um, well, we can maybe have a look back what, at the plants that I have already planted. So these plants have been moved and most of them divided very recently. So they're still trying to find their footing and um, which is where they're not looking very perky for the most part. But that will change in a couple of weeks and um, next year this part of the garden will be gorgeous. Um, some of the things that I have here, I, I tend to plant in groups so that the plants have a are sort of more resilient as a group than if you plant them, sort of spread them around individually. Uh, this is Sweet Sicily. Over there are hostas, which are edible. Um, 
and those were two plants that I divided. You can see they're already beginning to grow new leaves and uh, um, like I said, they'll be fine, even though it maybe does not look like it. And I have a group of uh, chervil plants. I love chervil, so um, I want to have lots of it. I have also moved some hyacinths and um, daffodils from other parts of the garden and this uh, Doronicum, sorry I don't know the English name but I can put it um, on the screen. This is a very early flowering perennial which I grow for pollinators. No part of this is edible as far as I know. Uh, I have also some uh, perennial onions over there but there will be lots more plants. Some of them this time I have actually bought. Um, I, I can show you one that has <laughs> that I bought last year and it has been sitting in its pot a little too long but uh, hopefully it will recover. So this is the poor um, poor plant which also hopefully will recover after uh, I plant it finally because we've had it uh, I also need some water. Uh, We've had it, like I said, I bought it last year and uh, it's been sitting in this uh, too small a pot for too many months. Um, so I will have to also disturb the roots when I'm planting it. It's a uh, white currant called Blanchette. And as you can see, it's been grafted on a rootstock. Usually currants are grafted on cranberry Ribes odoratum or Ribes aureum. Um, and uh, one of the reasons this is very good, this is good for the food forest, I think especially for small gardens, is that you can easily plant under it. Just to give you an idea of the desired outcome, uh, there's a part of the hair player here that I planted two or three years ago now. And you can see how beautifully it's growing now. This is a part of the garden where I'll be making zero changes uh, this year. Um, there's a plum tree over here, which is just finishing flowering. I hope it has not been damaged by frost and we will finally get some plums. Um, there is a gooseberry over there and there are many, there's a rhubarb just behind me, but there are also many flowering plants in a succession so that they can attract pollinators. Some of them are herbs, uh, like culinary herbs. Some of them are medicinal and some of them are edible. But some of them I add just for the sake of pollinators, like the daffodils uh, that are spread out between the other plants. This part of the garden is in the shade of our huge pear tree and most of it was planted last year so that gives you also an idea how much the plants spread and this is just the beginning of the season so they will get bigger of course the strip of the hostas at the front was planted earlier but the rest here again in groups the primulas ladies mantle um, the red bean sorrel and the longboard over there have all been planted just last year there are a lot of comfrey plants here too and those I actually want to move to another part of the garden. Comfrey is an extremely useful plant. Sometimes it's referred to as per, uh, permaculture plant number one um, because of, this, of its many uses. I definitely want to have lots of comfrey in my garden but I want it elsewhere. And what I'm doing now is digging up the plants and planting them around the sort of boundary of the garden in a triple strip because one of the functions that comfrey can fulfill is form a sort of barrier against perennial weeds which otherwise tend to creep into the garden from outside. So this is the sort of a longer term project. I have planted up some of some apart already last year, last spring but I will be continuing to do that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's a job that I enjoy because comfrey is such a tough plant. You can, you can just plant it any, any other way, any way you want and, and uh, neglect it completely and it will 
it will flourish. There are so many insects here. It's, um, it always makes me happy to, to see all the bees and bumblebees and hear them zooming. Uh, I'm sitting under the pear tree and it's, it's well, the flowering is going towards the end, but uh, this huge, this tree is huge. It's been planted decades ago. So we're very lucky that we inherited it when we bought our plot. It's conference. So one of the, I think objectively, one of the best pairs there, there is. Um, that's not what I wanted to talk about. I got derailed. Um, last job that I want to mention. Um, last year we bought this biodegradable fabric. It's, um, I think, 90% par, uh, plant waste from corn and 10% hessian. And we used it to mulch under our mixed hedge, which goes around the east and north side of our property. And again, uh, it really helps to suppress perennial weeds. And that means that the plants grow better because they're not, uh, um, they're not struggling what do you call it? They're, they don't need to outcompete the most, mostly couch grass in this case. So we have also seen a big difference in the parts of the garden that had been uh, covered. The producer of this fabric says that in our climate it should last three to five years. I doubt it will last five years, but even three years would be great. Last year we bought 10 meters of it and um, we sort of wanted to see how it would perform in the beginning it did not seem that it would that uh, it, it seemed to still let a bit too much light through but it's it's actually um, it's been very effective in the end so this year we bought more of it and we'll be covering the rest of the two sides of the garden where we have the edible hedge so as you can see, there's enough for me to do for more than a month, so no chance I'll be bored. I must say I'm feeling really excited about this decision to give myself permission to just garden. Um, and I'll report back in June with hopefully lots of progress. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you again in a month or so. Happy gardening!